Hi, I'm Holly, and with my sister Heather, you're listening to Haunted Family Podcast, a weekly podcast about the paranormal, unsolved mysteries, and even true crime. And I'm still sick. She's still sick. What are we going to do? I think I'm dying. I think I've got, like, I don't know. Well, according to Facebook, and it never lies, Facebook history, I had the flu Not this week, but like, I think it's next week. Because I sprained my ankle. And then you got the flu. And then I got the flu. Well, I finally broke down and got some cough medicine. Well, that's Because um, Friday night, we went to a concert. And And you didn't take me, and I am sad. I'm sorry. The next time we go see them, we'll bring you, because they're really super awesome. And, you know, since they're based out of Ohio, they're in our area all the time. I didn't know they were based out of Ohio. Yep. Um, the lead singer slash like, founder of the band was born and raised in Dayton. Oh. Um, That's not too far. So, anyway, we were getting ready. We are in the line to go into the concert because we somehow scored free tickets to get in. Um, and I... I cough so hard that I threw up. And I'm sure the people around me are thinking that I just, you know, pre-gamed the concert way too hard. Right. Yeah. And then we are we're done with the concert and we're leaving and I'm almost to the car and I cough again so hard that I throw up. And this guy who was just loitering in the area, I'm sure he thought that I was just drunk. So, yeah. right afterwards, I stopped and got some cough medicine for this because, I mean, I was I was miserable and I was making everyone around me miserable. Oh, but anyway, the concert I went to, I went and saw a Metallica tribute band called The Four Horsemen. Um, you can find them on Facebook, or you can find their their website. Hold on, let me see what their website name was. Yeah, I saw the video that um, they posted on YouTube, and I was blown away at how much they sound like Metallica and I am a huge Metallica fan. I mean I I there's just Yeah. I mean I'm just a gigantic fan and they sounded just like it. And tribute band Lars was, you know, dead on real Lars. Halfway through the concert they announced that the drummer who's playing with them, Tribute Band Lars, was actually backup tribute band Lars. Oh. Because real tribute band Lars was at his kids' basketball game. Oh, that's so nice. I mean, and kind of odd because I've never really known a musician that would take off playing a gig for anything. Well, apparently, he's a much apparently less, he's a good dad. Much less, you know, their kids something or yeah. another. Um. Their web- Actually, I don't really know them to know their kids. <laughs> their um, website is fourhorses.net. Listen, if you like Metallica, you like if you like old Metallica, listen to these guys because they sound like, as the lead singer said, like James when he had balls <laughs> and hair. I'm I'm not a fan of new Metallica. New Metallica sucks. And Lars is probably going to try to sue me over this because that's how they are now. But I don't like the sound that New Metallica has. Um, I mean, really starting with, especially starting with Load, their sound just yeah. made a steep nosedive. I don't know. Death Magnetic was not bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. Right. I mean, it was no Ride the Lightning or anything. And we won't even speak of the catastrophe that, album does not that is that album that we will not mention. You know, in in our network, it is not He Who Shall Not Be Named. It is album that shall not be mentioned. It's album that did not actually exist. I refuse to acknowledge that album. No. Um... But yeah, I mean, we had we had so much fun. Uh, fight broke out in the concert because you know you know a tribute band is tributing hard when 
a fight breaks out in the crowd. Yeah. Because I don't think that there was a fight at, like, Real Metallica when we went to that. I don't think so. Um, and, I, you know, I love live concerts because you run into such interesting people. There was this lady dancing next to me, and her move, her dance moves haven't been in style since Woodstock. Original, oh, Grandma. Original Woodstock. Um, there was a guy on the other side of me who looked like, all I can say is, death metal Fievel. For those Aww. of you who know who Fievel was. Um, if you don't, go rent the animated movie um, an American there tale. was this guy in front of me who was trying to play air guitar and he was so slow not like he was slow like he has you know physical or mental disability no he was just really could not keep time with the band <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend made the absolute number one worst thing you can do at a concert mistake I was so mad. Yes. I almost um, drove to Louisville and slapped him. Um, we get to the concert, and I have to go to the potty, of course. And I tell him, stand right here, right outside the door. And I get down, and I walk out the door, and he is nowhere to be found. Here I am at the front of the concert venue. Concert is starting. Sea of people. And he is nowhere to be found. And it's not like he is an easy person to lose in a crowd. He is no, six he's foot like, four. Yeah, he's he's a big boy. And I can't find him anywhere. Finally, I text him. And he's like, oh, I'm back by the bar. There was too many people up front. And I'm like, you realize that if somebody had abducted me, my sister would have murdered you. Oh, yeah, I would have. And happily gone yeah. to prison. I mean, not happily, but I would have done it without so, a doubt. I, I, I literally, you know, just the other day bought us tickets to go to a um, concert in that's coming up in June, part of the Slayer Farewell Tour, and if he makes that mistake at that concert, you know, I might beat him to death, because seriously, dude, but I mean, he, he's, the last concert me and him went to together was Willie Nelson. Okay, if I cannot edit that growly noise out, that is my four million year old Shih Tzu. Um, he has bonded with Emmy, but she is not home, and he wandered in here and fell asleep beside me. But I made the mistake of mentioning that he needed to get his nails clipped, and now he is awake and growling at me. So, I, I don't know. He can understand English language. Yeah, well, that's because he's... Actually, I think he's like 60-something in human years. 69, maybe. I don't know. He's old. So, but, you know, like the last concert we went to was... Uh, we saw Willie and Waylon... No, oh, sorry. Willie and Merle together. And that was about like a billion years ago. And... So, I think he just sort of forgot the rules of going to a concert with a female. Yeah, well, I will remind him a lot. So, Holly, you've had some very interesting, possibly paranormal things going on at your house. Do you want to I talk about it before have. we get started on this episode? Because I'm really pushing for Holly to have cameras installed inside her house right now. Yeah, okay, so um, we mentioned it on the podcast way back when. I don't remember which episode. That one time... I had an electrical issue. Uh, the uh, line coming into my house was sparking. Like the or... actual line that's on top on her roof. Yeah, yeah. And so somebody driving by, like I was in the house and the lights were going off and on and it was very weird and it freaked me out. And, and somebody knocked on the door. Uh, I'm trying to make a long story very short because this is only a very brief thing of what happened. So uh, long story short, somebody saw the sparking on top of my house stopped by to tell me they scared me in the process um i all the lights went off fire department came they fixed it um but when they sent me a message i wasn't home i had to go to a choir concert so 
um, they texted me and said, everything's fine. You, you can turn your power back on when you get in your house. So when I left my house, I locked the door. So they didn't have access to the inside of my house because they yeah. already came in and did their stuff. They sleep. didn't need access at that point. Yeah, they, they just needed on top of my house. So um, I came in, I turned on the lights, and oh, actually I, I threw the breaker back on, and that it's on one side of the house. Well, the kitchen is on the other side of the house, and Emmy goes, uh, Mom, we have another cat. Well, we have a lot of cats. So I said, are you, are you sure it's not like one of the cats? And she said, no. So I went in there. And it was a strange cat. Just had appeared in our house. Um, we named the cat Phantom. We kept... Actually, and Phantom was pregnant. And we kept Phantom for a little while. And then um, we gave her away to somebody who uh, wanted a strange cat. So, I kind of forgot about that. Then, um, just in the last since... Well, just since December, um, a series of, like, really weird things have happened. Like, over Christmas break, um, and it wasn't this way at Thanksgiving. Was it, Heather? I mean, was my living room cold at Thanksgiving? No. Okay, so sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas, my living room started getting really cold. And, I mean... It's Kentucky, so we have 60-degree days, and we have, like, negative 5-degree days. You just never know here. But, I mean, to be an older house, Holly's house is, you know, well-insulated. Decent yes. windows. And I had, so it's, when I first moved in, I when I first moved into this house, I pulled the door frame off, the um, and I insulated it, and then I put the frame back up. So, I I knew that my doors were... Um, were well insulated because I myself did that. So, but I just could not figure out why the living room was so cold. Like, it was so cold that I plugged in a space heater um, and kept it going. I lit our fireplace and kept yeah, it going. Yeah, we actually lit our fireplace it, Christmas. Yeah, and it, we hadn't done that. Like, well, I think I lit it when I first moved in to see if it worked. And we hadn't had to do it since. But the living room, again, it was just that cold. Only the living room. Only the Which living room. Which is odd because, well, I mean, why just the living room? Right. So, we, I, we couldn't figure it out. And, like, during that time... um. We had Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, we had Christmas, we had New Year's, and it was sometime after New Year's, maybe a week after New Year's, I was feeling around the door again, trying to see if there was some kind of leak that I was missing. And I just happened to look up where our vents are, and somebody had closed off the vents. Um, well, closed off that Holly's vent. Holly's vents so in, throughout her entire house are on the ceiling. Yeah, they're on the ceiling because my house was built in the 50s. And in order to put in my HVAC, they had to put it in the attic. But, I mean, this is wonderful because it means they didn't have to cut into her beautiful hardwood floors. Right. It also means that if the cats get mad at me, they're not going to pee down a vent. Because they can't. I went to the other vent in the room and it was closed off too. So I opened both of the vents. Then went into the kitchen and one of the vents, the one over the refrigerator, was also closed off. But the one by the door was not it was still open so that's why the kitchen i guess still had some warmth i don't know i couldn't figure it out i, I just thought this is the craziest thing ever the, none of the girls knew what was going on they didn't know they didn't even know that you could open and close and this is a family of short people so they would have had to got out a step ladder yeah i mean even the tallest one of us is only like you know five three so okay i kind of put that out of my mind that that happened and then, the other day, I was fixing um, I was fixing food for supper, and Abby and Hannah were gone to a ball game, and Emmy had had swimming, so she was asleep, and it was just, I was the only person awake. And, uh... <laughs> what is Wesley doing? He's just, he's just growling. <laughs> um, I, so I couldn't find the can opener. 
and I looked all through the kitchen. I looked in all the drawers. I looked in the cabinets. Um, I, I looked in weird places, like the refrigerator even. Looked in Emmy's room, thinking that maybe she carried it off. Looked in Abby and Hannah's room. I looked literally everywhere for this can opener. I finally gave up, left the house, ran to the dollar store, bought a can opener, came back, finished supper. The next morning, the can opener is sitting right beside the stove. So, but before the can opener incident happened, I was putting groceries away and the second shelf of like the food cabinet that I put food in, the second shelf just flipped forward and all of everything that was on that shelf came crashing down on top of me, broke three bowls on the way down and like all of our canned food was scattered all over the floor. And so the peg, one of the pegs was missing in the front. Well, today I found that missing peg in a drawer that the dish towels are in. So I don't know what's going on, but something something weird is. I think I think your house is definitely haunted. We know we know your house is haunted. Yeah. Well, my next door neighbor, well, I mean the next door neighbor that died, her house sold this week, so. You know, here's hoping she stays over in her own house for a while. Um, I mean, are you our very first us sitting together doing a YouTube video just went live today, and maybe two hours before we filmed that, me and Holly saw a ghost in her house. Yeah, and I'm sure it was not top seven though. Several years ago, I read a book and fell absolutely head over heels in love with it. The book was The Trail of the Lonesome Pine by John Fox Jr. For those of you who have never heard of John Fox Jr., I firmly believe that he is one of Kentucky's premier authors. I thought he was from Virginia. Um, no, actually, I think he was born in Kentucky. Uh, he lived, he split his time between Kentucky and the Big Stone Gap area of Virginia. Oh, he was born in Bourbon County. Oh. He died in Big Stone Gap, but then um, his body was transported and he's buried in Paris, Kentucky. His ancestors actually walked the wilderness trail into Kentucky. Huh. But, um, and he, he, all of his stories are wrote about, like, the, the border area between Kentucky and Virginia. And they're very, they're very real books. A lot of the books are actually based on real people from, or from my area. And this book follows the story of June Tolliver and a young geologist that she meets and falls in love with. But none of this has anything to do with um, our topic tonight, except for the fact that she wears a fairy stone as a necklace around her neck. And actually, when I visited the... Um, the house that was actually the boarding school that the real June Tolliver attended in Big Stone Gap, I bought a fairy stone from their gift shop. I'm sure most people, including my sister, are like, "What in the world is a fairy stone?" Because I don't think my I don't think I, I don't stone. think my sister has read any John Fox Jr. books after The Little Shepherd of Kingdom Come. Listen, I am not a crier at all. She's like, not. I she just, has I no just, emotion. I I am emotionally dead. And the little shepherd of kingdom come, I, I will forever remember this. I read it. It killed my soul. That's probably what, that's probably why I'm dead inside. And I was sitting on the edge of my grandparents' bathtub crying into a towel because I didn't want anybody to know that I was crying because that's also how I am. My papa, God rest his soul opened the door, looked at me, 
and I raised my head up from the towel and I was like, it's a sad book. And he laughed and shook his head and then just shut the door back. <laughs> but after that book, I will, I just never read another one because that I just couldn't. And you know, it's, I think what would make most people sad about that book is not what made me sad because I really don't give a shit about people, but he had to leave his dog and he had had his dog forever. Oh, and that I dog had been through of, thick and thin with him. And I just kept thinking about my dog who, who I'd had forever. And so I was just imagining life with that Rambo and I just couldn't. And it made me cry. So, yeah. Okay. So, fairy stones come... There are only a few places in the world that produce fairy stones. And they are a natural substance. They are... I'm probably going to butcher this. Sectorolite crystals that when formed make the shape of a cross. Legend says that when fairies heard that Jesus had been executed, they were so overwhelmed with sadness that they cried. And their cries formed cross-shaped tears. And one such place that produces these is in Virginia at... What is the name of this place? I want to say it's like... Oh, Fairy Stone State Park. Virginians. They're, they get straight to the point. So yeah, I have a fairy stone that I sometimes wear on a chain around my neck. It is actually currently over in my jewelry box because I am wearing my turtle. But yeah, so that, I think that's pretty much, that's a good little way to start our story. Fairy stones. Because you know, really, almost every culture that's ever existed has some belief of Fey folk. They might not call it fairies, but most have some belief in these things. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. If they go back, oh gosh, I don't know. And and it's across all. I started to say species of people. It it doesn't matter location, um, geog like geography or anything like that. Yeah, Almost um, everybody has fairies. The and Greeks, it goes back... The Greeks called them nymphs. Yeah. Um, they're elves in Germany. Almost every culture has some form of them. Um, Chinese tradition, they're mogways. We tend to think about fairies and we only think about Ireland. But, I mean, you can find similar... Everywhere. Right. What was that thing that... That little creature that we talked to Luann about when we was in Massachusetts? Oh, um, puck wedgie! I kind of wonder if the puck wedgie of the Wampanoag folklore is actually... Would be considered a fairy. Because they're only about yeah. two feet tall and mischievous. And really mean. And... In history, especially in Ireland, uh, people were terrified of fairies. They'd steal your babies. And, huh? They'd steal your babies. Sometimes fairies mm -hmm. would steal your children. Changelings. Yeah, you've been watching too much of the labyrinth. It's really a belief. But yes, I've also watched the labyrinth a bunch of times. Fun fact, part of Emmy's name came from labyrinth. Yeah. Um, also, fun fact, the other two names came from... Um, Clifford, Clifford the Big Red Dog. Yeah. Because I had fertility issues. And so I thought that Abby was going to be my only one. So I gave her every name that I liked. You know, to get it out of the way. Yes, so I Abby had three that, names. <laughs> yes, that's why Abby had three names. So then, when... Emmy came along. Well, actually, I think we told this story once before that. So Emmy, ha Abby had an imaginary sister named Emmy that she played with, and then one day she stopped talking about imaginary sister Emmy, and I asked why, and she said, "Well, because she's real," which I was like, "Oh, okay." I didn't even know I was pregnant then, 
So, I did, I could not think of any other names that I liked. So, I was like, okay, Abs, you can name your sister. Emmy actually almost ended up with one of Abby's first names. One of Abby's middle names is a first name. Yeah, because I really liked Olivia, and I was sad that we're not that it, we didn't get to actually use it. Use yeah. It. Anyway, so then she decided that she wanted to name her Emily Elizabeth from Clifford the Big Red Dog, and I was like, okay, that's fine, but that's pretty obvious. So we need to stick something else like there, and so she was like, well, how about Sarah from Labyrinth? And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, Abby had a very good vocabulary for a three-year-old. Yeah. I swear, Abby learned how to speak, and her first words was put into a complete sentence. Yeah, her first sentence was shoe department, please. Yeah. I will never forget the first time she ever spoke to me directly. And I mean, I was up there visiting her every weekend. I walk in the door, and she says, hiya, honey. And I'm like, What? You couldn't say a word last weekend, and now you're saying, hiya, honey? Okay. So, I I thought it was funny, like, in my research about fairies, uh, that sometimes cottages were built where the front door and the back door align, so that if you opened it up at night, the fairies would just pass right on through. Kind of like and shotgun houses? Yeah, but that's funny, because that's how my doors are. It is. Yeah. So, I guess we've always sort of believed in fairies. Yeah, we have. I remember as a little kid leaving candies outside for the fairies. Because you want to keep your fairies happy. Right, because apparently they're evil. Yeah. As <clears throat> most small things are. I don't remember a time... Yeah, I mean, the smaller you are, the closer to hell. So, I don't ever remember a time... When I didn't refer to a circle of mushrooms in the yard as a fairy ring. It's just always been a fairy ring to me. Yeah. And I do remember, though, that my friends growing up thought that I was weird that I believed in fairies. Of course, most of my friends growing up also thought I was weird that I absolutely 100% believe in the paranormal. Right. Yeah. I mean, occasionally, it's just one of those occasionally they'd want to use it to their advantage, like... When that one wanted to have a seance and contact Johnny Depp. <laughs> I love my friends, but they're not the brightest human beings. Well, fun fact. Did you know that I'm a fairy? At least according to Abby's kindergarten class. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I, um, my ex-husband and I were the type of parents where we did not tell the kids that Santa was real. Uh, the Easter Bunny was never real. Uh, none of none of that was real. And we weren't going to tell them that there was a tooth fairy. It, so uh, it, was, it was just one of those things where, you know, they never really cared that other people believed in this. The, o- the only that fairy that they believe in is the only fairy that really matters, and that's the granola bar fairy. Yeah, which is uh, which is another story. That's that's funny. So I said, d- Abby was in kindergarten, and it's the age where you know people are losing their teeth. So I knew that kids in her class would be talking about the tooth fairy. So I said, okay, listen, Abby, I just want to let you know before you lose a tooth that I'm the tooth fairy, and if you lose a tooth. Just let me know, and I'll put I'll, I'll put money under your pillow if you want money under your pillow, or I'll just give you money, you know, if you want it that way. Just let me know how, how we're going to do this, and we'll do it. And she was like, oh, okay. Well, she went to school, and she, I did not specify, don't tell your friends that there's no such thing as the Tooth Fairy, like I did with Santa Claus. I made sure to say there's no such thing as Santa Claus, but don't you dare tell other people that... He doesn't exist. I didn't specify with the tooth fairy, and I should. Because Abby is a very literal school. person. Yes, and she went to school, and she told all of her friends that I was the tooth fairy. Well, I am really short. I am four foot ten. So all of these little kids, who by this time were about my height, thought, "Oh, okay. Well, Abby's mom must be the tooth fairy because she's really short." 
they started telling me, like, hey, my tooth is loose. Do you want to look at my tooth? Like, look at my tooth. My tooth fell out. You know, and like every time I saw them, they would be telling me about their teeth. And I was like, Abby, did you tell them I'm a dentist or something? Like, why do they keep telling me about their teeth? Abby did tell her class also that her dad uh, made drugs. Yes, and he does. I mean, he's a chemist and he works for a pharmaceutical company. So he does, he, he does, but he makes medicine drugs, not like meth or anything. <laughs> it finally came out that she told her class that I was the tooth fairy. And every one of those kids believed that I was the one coming into their house at night and leaving them money. So then Holly had to explain that she is not... That I am not actually the tooth fairy. The granola bar fairy. We would go... We, we lived an hour away from any of the grandparents. So we would go like two weekends a month or something and spend a whole weekend and visit the grandparents. And I would pack snacks, like granola bars, um, like little cheese snack, like whatever. I would just, but granola bar was a constant because the girls really liked it. Well, I would hang the bag, like when we would come back from visiting, I would just take whatever bag we had and I'd just hang it up in the closet in the hallway. Well, one day a granola bar fell out and was laying in the floor. And so Abby opened it up, opened up the closet and she was like, hey, there's a granola bar in the floor. And I said, oh, it must be the granola bar fairy. And she was like, oh, yeah, the granola bar fairy. And then it's like it hit her and she was like, oh, there's no such thing as a granola bar fairy. <laughs> but now we have this ongoing joke about the granola bar fairy. Yeah. She thought, oh, yeah, finally something's real. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> and I, it probably does seem really weird to our listeners that the girls know that the paranormal is real. They know the ghosts are real, but we have—they have never believed in like Santa Claus. Yeah. Um. So here's a fun fact about fairies: there are some plants and trees that fairies really, 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 really like. And if you cut down these plants and abuse these plants, they might come and seek vengeance on you. Oh, really? What kind of plants? Saint John's Wort. Hawthorn trees, foxglove, ground seal, and yarrow. Listen, I planted some foxgloves, but I am I have a black thumb and I think I killed them. I have this little garden bed um right beside the ramp in my house to my house. But it's under an awning, so it gets very little light and very little water. And I have a ton of yarrow growing there. Like, just a crazy patch of yarrow. So, I guess fairies must really like that. I have a fairy garden in my backyard that I built out of a little red wagon. But, it doesn't have any plants in it. It's just... Because she's a black thumb. Little, she can't grow plants. Again, I have a black thumb, yeah. It, um, I have, like, houses and benches and, like, fake fairy statues and... It's cute. At one time, I had the plane from Lost crashed into the fairy garden. Like, I had, I just bought a, like, a wooden plane from Walmart, and I painted it up so that it looked like the Lost plane. If anybody, you know, maybe remembers that show. I, I don't think I ever watched an episode of that show. Uh, I watched it until... I don't know. It just started getting... They started not answering questions fast enough, and I got bored, and I just stopped watching it. Yeah. Holly does get bored very easy. I found an interesting... I found several stories online where people claim they have seen fairies. There's apparently a fairy investigation society in England. Did you know that? I did not know that. I am... Can any of our listeners in England confirm that? If so, send us an email at hauntedfamilypodcast at gmail.com. This source is from listverse.com, so eh, I don't know. I would personally love to be part of a fairy investigation society. I bought a fairy, um, fairy catching kit off of 
I don't know, some website, maybe it was Amazon or something, and I, because I thought it would be cute, and it's like these little bitty, um, jar, and, like, everything was just teeny tiny, and Abby saw it and said that that was mean, and she threw it away. Oh, Abby's mean. Well, she just doesn't want to sketch in fairies. So, apparently, in 1937, the Fairy Investigation Society of England received a letter from a young woman who said that she'd had a strange encounter at an old house in Gloucester, 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 I don't know. Please don't hate us people in England. Well, I mean, that's a town in Massachusetts too, so I don't, I don't really know how it's pronounced. Because you people have, you know, you have a funny way of turning words. I mean, it's gorgeous, but I mean, I can't, my hillbilly tongue just can't wrap it around that. The house has a garden attached to that attached to the forest of birdlip breeches. And one day she was washing her hair and she saw a young woman walk oh no, sorry. This is weird word weirded weirdly. One day after she weirdly. Yes, one day after she had washed her hair, she walked into a nice sunny spot to let her hair air dry naturally. She was just out of sight of the house when she felt tugging on her hair. She turned around to discover a man only nine inches tall and dreadfully ugly tangled up in her hair. Oh. And she said his skin was the color of dead leaves. And he complained about being trapped in her hair in a high squeaky voice. The moment well, man, I can understand if I was tangled up in somebody's hair, I'd probably be bitchy too. You know, when my hair was super long, I, I used to have like hip length hair. I had a cicada get stuck in my hair and die. Ugh. But you know what? That's slightly better than a fairy. Or slightly worse than a fairy. Yeah, I was going to say, I think I'd rather have a fairy. So, did you know that there is like seven different types of fairies? I did not. What are the types of fairies? And, okay. So, and I'm totally pronouncing this wrong because that's is what Tinkerbell I Is Tinkerbell one of them? Um, well, she, kind of. She's a, she's more like a pixie. Okay. So, you've got the Azrae, which I'm sure is not how you say it. And it's an aquatic fairy. Kind of like a mermaid, uh, but not. And it is found in deep water and it's breathtakingly beautiful and shy and it surfaces once a sensor once a century um it's totally afraid of daylight um so it will melt if it's exposed to sunlight that's not nice no so try not to catch it if you see it and um it's very 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 cold I started to say that totally sounds like me being the aquatic fairy, except I am terrified of the dark, so that would totally not be me. Okay, then we got the Pixies, which is kind of like Tinkerbell. Um, they've got gossamer wings and pointed nose and ears and like heads that seem like they may be a little bit too big for a fairy. Um, they're not mean. But they are pranksters, and uh, they have a reputation for uh, misleading people. Uh, they love flowers, and they assist in household chores. I need to get me a pixie stat. Yeah, I need, um, I need some pixies up in here. They shapeshift, so they can change from looking like a pixie to looking like something else. So then you have an elf, which is, could kind of be half human, half fairy. Uh, they dwell in forests, in caves, around the hills and the rocks, and uh, they've got also have pointed ears and large expressive eyes. They are not immortal, but they do live to be very, very, very old, like centuries. Then you've got, believe it or not, 
mer people, so like mermaids. I didn't know that they were considered a fairy. I didn't know that either, but they are. Um, and so everybody should know what a mermaid is or a merman. Um, then we have a banshee. I think banshees really are probably one of the cooler members of the fairy family. Yeah. Hey, did you hear, speaking of banshees, um, did you hear about that politician who said that women who have careers are really just banshees that are trying to ruin like men's lives or something like that? I did not. Oh, let me see if I can Google this. I listened to I listened to it this week and it was it was crazy. Oh, I found it. Republican Cortland Sykes of he, no, he's a U.S. Senate candidate from Missouri. Uh, yeah, I knew it was Midwest. He said, I'm "Sorry, people from Missouri." He said, "I want a home cooked. I want a. I want to come home to a home cooked meal." I'll cook dinner at six every night. One that she fixes and one that I expect one every day. To have daughters learn to fix fix after they become traditional homemakers and family wives. None of that makes sense. Career obsessed banshees who forego home life and children and the happiness of family to become nail biting, manophobic, hell bent feminist she devils. Who shriek from the tops of a thousand tall buildings? They think they can leap over in a single bound. Had had it not been for men suppressing them, wow, he's a case. Yeah. Oh. Well, anyway, so I, that's apparently what I am because I have a job. Oh well. And no husband. You no, know, I just think that banshees. You know, their 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 ear their um howl is supposed to foretell death and usually they were attached yeah. to a to a certain family like families would have their own yeah. banshee i've always wondered um i don't know about where you are from not you holly but you know our listeners oh, i was like you know where i'm from <laughs> around here usually you people will mention that dogs howl at the time that someone close in that neighborhood died I'm sure you've experienced this. Okay, yeah. But, you know, it's a different type of howl. I remember vividly, um, I was spending the night with my grandma when one of our, one of her neighbors committed suicide. He had sent his wife and their granddaughter who was with him that night to town for ice cream. And when... When they were gone, he killed himself. No, no one in the neighborhood heard the gunshot. But I remember all of the dogs started howling. And it was this weird howl. And my grandma got really silent. And she said, I know that sound. Someone's just died. And she was right. Absolutely right. Which grandma? Grandma Young. Oh, that's one, one, odd one of the, from her. Our grandmother came from a very um, in tune family, and my grandma was absolutely not in tune. No, not at all. Which is why, I, but both of our grandmas lived like actually the house that the person killed themselves was right between our grandparent our grandmother's houses. So I mean, it could have been either. Yeah, but I was spending that with, I was either. spending that with Grandma Young at the time. Um. So I've always kind of wondered if the dogs were hearing the banshees well. And that's why they would start howling. Because, I mean, I mean, of course, in this case, the dogs could have heard the gunshot. But, I mean, it happens in cases even when the death is silent. When there's not, you know, a, a, a gunshot. So. I was trying to think, like, the week that my neighbor died, I was trying to think if my dogs wailed or anything but I don't I don't think that they did not that, not that I remember okay so number six is your leprechauns Ooh, I want a bowl of lucky and, charms yeah so 
Leprechauns are supposed to grant you three wishes um, in turn for your freedom, but I have never caught a leprechaun. I have always been secretly fearful of leprechauns because of the movie Leprechaun. Yeah, well, I have a friend who is not much taller than me, and he is a natural redhead with super pale skin, and I always joke that he is a leprechaun. Number seven is a brownie. Brownies are one of my favorite types of fairies. Yeah, I remember when I was a brownie. I was a brownie, too. Not this type of brownie, though. No, but kind of. It's what it's based on. Uh, because a brownie is a benevolent fairy who helps the sick and helps old people. Only they get their name from their brown face and hair. They're not visible to ordinary people. And they can only be seen by people who have second sight, people that are in tune. They offer their household services in exchange for honey and bread. Well, listen, brownies. I will, live, I will give you all the honey and bread you want. I make great bread. If you come and clean my house. Um, I, I'm not very good at cleaning. So, I can't do that. I'm sorry. Well, maybe there's another fairy. No, another brownie out there that's willing to. But I remember the time that I had to go to the doctor. And I think I was getting shots or something. I don't remember. But anyway, I was at the doctor. And I said, um, how long is it going to be? I have to get back to my, I have to get back to brownies. And the doctor said, oh, I had some brownies for lunch. And I started crying because I didn't realize that he meant the, the food brownies. <laughs> yeah, and our mom <laughs> thinks that I'm the one who started crying. But it was Holly. Our mom doesn't remember me. which one of us is which. So I admitted to crying twice this episode. I was also like five years old. It was before my heart got frozen. So, I mean, but things like sprites and goblins and all of those would be considered in the fairy world also, right? Yeah, but they they would be, like a sprite would probably be another name for a pixie. Oh. Um, a goblin would be probably another name for your leprechaun. Uh, they, they are also in the fairy family. They just fit into one of the other seven. Okay, so, we'd be, we'd probably be, you know, like, shut down as a podcast if we didn't mention probably one of the most famous fairy cases in the world. Okay. The Cottonley Fairies. Yes. Cottonley Fairies is a series of five photographs taken by Elsie Wright and Francis Griffiths. Um, two cousins who lived in Cottingley, England. And they took these pictures in 1917. So, 100 years ago? Ish? Yeah. Elsie was 16 when the pictures were taken, and Francis was nine. Wow. These girls didn't die until, like, the 80s. So. Oh, really? Yeah. These pictures at the time became, like, a huge sensation. Um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle came to investigate this. Um, he used um, pictures and stuff to for an article in um, the Stand magazine, which is... Well, which was a... Um, monthly magazine composed of short fiction and general interest articles in um, mm -hmm. England. But all good things must come to an end. And in 1983, just before both girls died, one girl died in um, 88 and one girl died in 86, they confessed that it was all fake. What? No. Yeah. Elsie had copied illustrations of dancing girls from children's books. And they had put those in on the pictures. But, here's the interesting thing. Both girls, until the day they died, still maintained that they had actually seen fairies. They had just faked the pictures of the fairies. Okay, I can believe that. 
They said that it took them so long to admit the truth because the pictures had fooled Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and they were really embarrassed to just be two little village kids who could do, you know, one of the, I mean, someone as knowledgeable and smart as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who right. is fam more famous for being the guy who wrote Sherlock Holmes. Right. I mean, if you are tricking Sherlock Holmes, then you've done something. Yeah. But, I mean, the pictures were very cute. Um, they were. The series of pictures showed um, both girls posing in, in various poses with the fairies. Um, well, I'm still sad that I've never got to see one. Well, you know, your life isn't over yet. You may eventually see a fairy. Well, I hope. I mean, we think that we came close once. Yes. I mentioned earlier that we've always sort of believed, you know, that when you see a ring of mushrooms in the yard, that, that was the fairies having a meeting or having a dance, whatever. Well, one night, um, at the time Holly and I was sharing a bedroom. We didn't have to share a bedroom. It was a three-bedroom house. But for whatever reason, we were choosing to share a bedroom at this time. Because our house was freaking it haunted, was. and we were terrified to sleep by ourselves. The room that we shared had two windows that was on um, opposing walls. This, right, so one was yeah, the front yard, one was the side yard. This bedroom was um, in the, at the corner of the house, so one was on one wall and one was on the other. And we had put our beds kind of right at those win at windows, but instead of going straight out from the windows, we had them angled at the corner of the room facing inward. And that night, we started hearing... We had all just laid down. I mean, it wasn't late at all. It was maybe 10, 11 o'clock. And we hear bangs outside. And then a flash of light go through one window. And, you know, but angled. So it was going from one window to the other window. Right across our beds. And this happened, we all probably heard it 10, 15 times. But it was like, each time we heard it, the bang and the light was coming from the other side of the house. So it was switching sides. Yeah, like it was alternating. Um, our parents hollered in and told us just to, you know, keep our heads down. And we didn't. I, firm, I vividly remember Holly getting on the floor and crawling over to my bed. Not because she was going to protect me, because she needed me to protect her. <laughs> yes, I am heartless and terrified of everything. Um, and I remember the next morning... We asked the neighbors, because we had neighbors living on both sides of it at this point in time, and none of our neighbors heard anything or saw anything at all. Um, now, we had an issue with a prowler. We've mentioned this in previous episodes. We had an issue with prowlers in this neighborhood, so all of the neighbors were hyper vigilant. If anything went on outside, all of the neighbors, you know, would be out. Yeah. But none of our other neighbors heard this. And everyone was home that night. Um, the interesting part was that when we walked outside the next morning, our whole yard, our whole front yard, was absolutely covered in fairy rings. There was probably 40 fairy rings in our yard. Yeah, it was... It was very freaky. Um, so we just assumed that the fairies were having a party in our yard. Um, who knows? Maybe we experienced the wild hunt rolling through our front yard. Um, the wild hunt is supposedly a, well, it's a European folk myth that... A group of supernatural huntsmen are constantly on a wild chase through the other realms um, after their game. I mean, in, in some beliefs, it's fairies and you know, elves, and others, it's just ghosts. Um, I mean, depending on where you are in the world, 
you know, that influences what you believe the Wild Hunt is. I actually don't know if Native Americans have a... I couldn't find a reference to a Native American version of the Wild Hunt. Um, all the ones that I have found have been like Scandinavia, Germany, Great Britain. And depending on where in those countries you are, affects who you believe is the leader of the Wild Hunt. In some areas, it's King Arthur. In Ireland, it's considered the um, the fairy cavalcade, and it's well. Now I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of the person who leads it because I don't speak Gaelic. I just I don't Gaelic. Why do you not Gaelic? I just I can't. With the exception of I was watching um, Tim Allen, not Tim Allen, P. Allen Smith's um, Garden Home. The other day, and it was just throwback to this Halloween episode, and he said um, he was talking about it, and he kept referring to it as Sam Hain. And I was like, you know, I don't speak Gaelic, but I do know that he's mispronouncing that because it's Sawin in it's it's spelled Sam Hain, but it's pronounced Sawin in Gaelic. Um, yeah, you know, I totally say that wrong. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I think that's very interesting. And I, at the time, I'd never heard of the Wild Hunt. But, you know, in year, later years when I researched the Wild Hunt, I was like, no, oh, I wonder if that's what we experienced that night. I bet it was. Well, are we ready to stupid criminal? Yeah, you know, although I realized that <laughs> we had actually picked two stupid criminals for this week. Oh, okay. Well, we can just do one. Okay, you want to do yours, or um, let's give them both. I think our listeners deserve it. Okay. Our first stupid criminal of this week comes from my neighbors. Not my actual neighbors, but, you know, the next county over, Floyd County, Kentucky, where a guy stole a hot dog machine, well, a hot dog stand, a rather big one. Okay. I hadn't read the updated version of it. So, last week, a woman, Becky Cuss, 70, of Floyd County, had someone um, come onto her property and steal her hot dog stand. It's like those um, stands you see on the street corners in New York. I didn't even know we had anybody that had anything like that here. She had just bought it. She's 70 years old. This was gonna, She said this was going to be her next great adventure in life. Was setting up at festivals and stuff selling hot dogs. Okay. Which, you know, hey, why not? Each to their own. But someone stole it. But. Okay. Law enforcement found it the very next day because later on that night, somebody tried to break in to a mobile home just a few roads down from this lady. They shattered the back window of the house. The whole yard was, you know, just tore up with muddy tire tracks. But the guy had stole so much stuff that the vehicle was heavy and got stuck in the uh, mud in the wet ground. And he had to ditch the hot dog stand to be able to get away. <laughs> so he let the stolen hot dog stand at somebody else's house. Well, I mean, at least the 70-year-old woman got it back. Yes. And I think it was still in decent shape when she got it back. Except for being muddy. Well, that's good. I mean, you can clean off some mud. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. that's. But the original story that I read, and I sent to Holly last week, at that time, they hadn't figured out where the hot dog stand came from. These people just, you know, came home to find that their house had been burglarized and that somebody had left them a hot dog stand. <laughs> it's like, um, thanks, I think. So what's your stupid criminal this week? Does it involve a hot dog stand? No, no, no. And my stupid criminal actually just happened. Like, it just happened last night. So, an hour away from us is, well, an hour away from me, is the city of Lexington. It, it also has a mall. It's the closest mall to us. Well, to me. 
I could go to Huntington or Ashland, but it's not really, it's not really a mall. Oh, so, I mean, Huntington is bigger than the Lexington Mall, but, I mean, Huntington right now, well, I don't know about right this second, but I know right around Christmas, they were talking about having to bring in the National Guard to control crime in Huntington. Well, they almost needed to do that last night. Um, the last time I went to the Huntington Mall, which was right around Christmas, I swear there was a National Guard helicopter patrolling the mall. That's crazy. I know. So what happened at the Lexington Mall? Because it's usually a very um, nice mall. It, yeah. It, uh, okay. It is common for the two malls in Louisville to have fights break out. Especially St. Matthews. It's not com- yes, but it's not common for the Fayette Mall to have something like that happen. But last night, 30 kids ranging in age from 10 to 15 got out of control like really out of control two teenager girls were arrested for disorderly conduct that's like totally a louisville mall type thing i know uh so it all started with two girl well actually doesn't say two it all started with a group of girls at the dillard store And they were knocking stuff over. They were climbing on shelves. um, Standing on tables. I mean, they were just destroying the store. And the people who worked at the store called security. Well, these girls refused to leave when the security guard told them to leave. So, the security guard was like, alright. So, they called in two officers who are there patrolling on the weekends. And the officers told the girls to leave and began directing them towards the food court, which has an exit to the outside. In the food court, the girls started getting into a fight with other girls. And this was like at 720. Then the officers started to break it up, but the girls were fighting the officers and they had to call back up for a group of girls. Well, I mean, in the officer's defense, there are a few things in this world worse than teenage girls. Well, I have a house full of them, and I will attest to that. I mean, seriously, our listeners who are females, do you remember what middle school and high school was like? Girls are so mean and catty. Ugh. We gotta work on that. I know, it's like mean girls. So the police stayed and patrolled the area and they still had off and on reports from other people about the juvenile girls running around the mall and the movie, like the movie theaters right there too, causing uh, issues. So people of Lexington, rein your girls in, goodness sakes. (laughs) Nobody wants to be trashy. I mean, you may want to be trashy, but nobody wants you to be trashy. So, yeah, that's that's what went down. So, teenage girls in Lexington, if you were involved in that fight, you are our stupid criminal of the week. You are. Congratulations. You know what you get for this? Not a gold star. Gold stars for winners. They get a whole podcast, well, ending of a podcast directed at how stupid they are. So, if you want to start a podcast, I actually have two things for you this week if you want to start a podcast. One, there's always Podbean, who is awesome, and we love Podbean, and we cannot say enough wonderful things about everything that is Podbean, and that if you would like to sign up to use or sign up for a podcast using Podbean, you can use our affiliate code, Haunted Family PB. But if you have been listening to me say this over and over and over about how you should start your own podcast and you should use Podbean, but you are like, I don't even know where to start on starting a podcast. You're in luck. Because I have started a series on my blog about starting a podcast because it hit me last week that we tell them this every week about 
if you want to start a podcast, sign up for Podbean. But do you remember when we were starting Haunted Family Podcast? And we couldn't find any decent. Right. And we researched and we researched and we researched. And really, there was nothing that gave us all the information that we needed to know. So, I've started once a week. There's going to be a new post up that will kind of give you all the information that you need to know about starting your own podcast. And um, you can find it at my blog, which is cathairandglitterblog.com. You might have to... I'll put the direct link to it on our show notes. um, Because I'll probably have a bunch of other random posts up since that one. And if you don't want to... If you don't want to read all the general stuff, you don't have to. If you just want to get to the nitty gritty of how to start your own podcast. Um, the first post about it is seven things to consider before you start your podcast. It's one of those, do you really, really want to do this? Yeah, well it was kind of those things that I wished that we had nailed down details before we got started. Because one of them is, I mean yeah, we knew what topics we wanted to cover and we knew... Um, kind of what name we wanted to cover, but honestly, we didn't know how we were, we didn't know that if we were going to both talk at the same time, we didn't know. And those first, those first episodes that you can no longer find, we were not talking at the same time. We each recorded individually and we had different segments. Right. Because we love, we love lore. And we love, and we love criminal, and so we tried to have like I did a segment, she did a segment, we, and we tried to be all serious, and that's not us. We're not serious. And it came across very quick that that's not us, and so it was six months of us recording, and it was all wasted because it was all it. It came across. Yeah, as we crap. really needed to find our voice. We did, and thankfully we did, and thankfully we got all of the kinks worked out. And that's what this series, I'm hoping, will do is help you if you want to have a podcast, help you walk through all of those things that we didn't think of before. So, if you've got questions. Or you want to give us a topic suggestion, or you've got a stupid criminal, you can find us at Haunted Family Podcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Haunted Family Podcast, at all of those. Yeah. We love hearing from our listeners. We really do. We do. We get so excited. And the band I listened to the other, the band I went to see the other night said on stage, you know, if it wasn't for you all, we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be here. And, you know, it's, well, you know. That's true. And that's it. If if we didn't have your you all as our listeners, I mean, we would still be talking about paranormal. We'd still be discussing all of this stuff. But it wouldn't be nearly as fun. No, it wouldn't. And I really think that going back to Podbean, being able to see where everybody comes from makes it so much more exciting for us. I mean, like, we know we've got listeners in England, so when you when you talk about the, the fairy society, we can say, hey, shoot us an email and let us know. We, we know. We know we have people We know there. that after, um, after we recorded Di- the Atloff Pass, that we now have people listening to us in Russia that are probably spies from, you know, Vladimir Putin. But, okay, we're, we're okay with that. Or they're friends of Venora. We yeah, I mean, that's, that's true, too. I thought of her this week. I went to Jungle Gyms in in Louisville, not Louisville, in um, Cincinnati, and they had a Russian food section. And I thought about her. I was like, you know, if I knew what type of food she liked, I would have bought her something, you know, Russian foodie and had Emmy give it to her. Oh, I don't know what she likes. But, yeah. If you're ever in Cincinnati, go to Jungle Gyms. It's the most amazing grocery store I've ever been in. They have everything. Yeah, I want to go. I had a very adventurous day without you, Holly. I'm sorry. 
I am so sad. Like my heart is broken. Well, the next time if I had a heart, it would be broken. Well, the next time that the four horsemen are playing, I'll drag you with me. Okay, well, at least you didn't go to Ikea with True. me. True, we didn't have time. The lead singer of the Four Horsemen and the guitar player of the Four Horsemen, so James and Kirk, uh -huh. um, also have another band, that they, another tribute band that they have, but you would not want to listen to them. What's Make that? Only That's... they call themselves Mecca Death. Ugh. I, I'm just not a Mecca Death fan. Although I remember your band director from high school used to call Metallica Metal Licka. <laughs> <laughs> and he would give me such a hard time for liking them. Well, I, I really. So yeah, if you're listening, Scott, I just totally called you out. <laughs> I really want to um, contact the tribute band and say you all named yourselves wrong. You should not be the Four Horsemen. You should be Talaker. <laughs> but I don't know if they'd find that as funny as I find that. Yeah, I think I think that's hysterical. Okay, so it's not just me being on cold medicine. It really is funny. No, it really is funny. Okay, so okay, well that's it, all we. It got, is, but so. since we're doing YouTube now and we are you know trying to flesh out videos for YouTube, if there's something that you want to see. Be it a paranormal craft project, like the episode we've got up right now, or how to, you know, do something paranormal, or anything. Or if you want to see us live talking about this topic or that topic, let us know. We can only get together, like, once every other month or so, face-to-face, -to, -face to film these videos. So we'll do, like, right. two or three videos a day when we do get time. Yeah, so that... Yeah, so we, we can spread them out. And for our... Um, so coming up sometime in the next few months, we will be doing a live stream on our YouTube channel. We haven't set a date for that. When we set our date for it, we will let you all know. But we will be doing a live stream. So be ready. Yeah, we can't wait. I'm a little nervous. I'll admit. I... Um, absolutely. Um, we edited this out. I'm pretty sure we did. But at one point in recording the video for for that um, we uploaded today, the camera comes on and I'm, I look at myself in the monitor and my first the first words out of my mouth is, "Oh my God, I have a five head." <laughs> so I will probably be cutting bangs before our, we record again. Okay. Well, we have droned on and on and on during this episode, and I've almost completely lost my voice. So, find us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are on iTunes. We are on, we're on Google Play now, aren't we? I think we are. Um, we're on YouTube. We're on, I think we're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. Find us. Like us. Love us. Write and review us. Send us a message. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.